Hi, welcome to Base Coating Part 2. Now this is um, an apple that I just sketched on. And so what I want to do is, since it was sketched on with graphite, I just want to go in and blot it with a kneaded eraser. That way I'm lifting any excess uh, graphite up so it will not blend with my paint. It's very important. Um, and you want to keep your lines very light. So if you come in with brand new tracing paper and the lines are really bold, just go ahead and even kind of just rub it with your um, kneaded eraser and it should soften it. So as we begin to base coat this, I've got a little bit smaller brush. And just as I loaded my brush before, I put some extender in it and rinsed it out so it's ready to go. Then what I want to do is I want to pull off on my puddle here and I want to make sure that I'm not overloading my brush. So what I mean by that is when you look at it, the brush has pretty much remained its normal shape. If you come in and you have too much um, paint in it, there's globs, you're getting it, the paint down into the ferrule so that will ruin your uh, brush. And then when you go to set it down um, on the surface, what you will get is ridges. And you will get all those built up little ridges. And you don't want that because if um, you want a nice smooth image when you're painting. So what I'm going to do is rinse my brush so I get all that excess paint out. And your brush should be dampened. And so then what I'm going to do is come in and I start on the outside line and I come in and I just use my chisel edge to pull around there. And as I pity pat pull, I'm making sure that I don't have any ridges. So let's see if I can get one going. There's a ridge right there. So what I'm going to do is just kind of go over that. And this is a fairly light color on, on top of our light background. Um, I've mixed camel with antique gold, and this is going to be an undercoat for a red variegated apple. So I pull my brush towards me. I find that much easier. Now you can see I just went back over my apple, and I went outside the line. That's okay. I'll just clean that up really quick. So now I'm going to begin to turn my piece and make it easier for me to pull. And I'm just avoiding the um, little stem. You can paint it, put, paint it in and then paint over it. Um, the colors here are, are not too contrasting. But notice how, again, I'm not allowing any ridges to build up on it. If I have any ridges, I quickly lay my brush back on that 30 degree hand, um, angle, and then the ridges will disappear. And I come around the outside edge. Now you could also very quickly come in with like a little number three round or a liner brush and um, line the outside edges. But you have to be careful with that because sometimes that will show. But I generally will work the outside edge and then come in so that, that my surface doesn't continue to grow. So that looks pretty good. Now you can see that there's a lot showing through. This is the acrylic layering technique and there's some uneven areas. I will need to do this a second time. That is fine with me. Um, it's just the name of the game with acrylics. I also see that I have an uneven edge. I will have to fix that once it's dry because at this point I could start lifting the paint. With acrylics everything's easy to fix. You just have to remember when to do it. And this time I want to show you how to use a round brush. Generally round brushes come to a nice point, but if you take and press on it, you can see the hairs become a flat brush. So then I can go in here and load my brush. And what I like about this is I can use it either as a liner or as a flat brush. It's very important though that you do not let ridges form when you're using a number three round 
to base coat. So what I'll do is even wipe it on my uh, paper towel and come in and make sure that I have almost no paint in my brush and then I make sure that all those ridges are gone. And that's just so much easier to get into small tight areas. So then we feel this. Now it's very wet. You can see by just by touching that, I lifted it so it did not dry. So what I'm going to do is let this dry and then it will add a second coat. So I've been in the middle of drying it and I wanted to show you, there's still some shiny paint over here. And even though when I touch it over here, it feels fairly cool, over there it's still shiny. So I'm gonna continue drying it until that sheen is completely gone. So now, since I touched it, there's a little bit of texture in there. So what I can do is come in and very lightly sand over this because it's completely dry. It will make it nice and smooth and even. And never sand anywhere near your paint because if you do, what's going to happen is all the debris that's here will go into the paint and then you'll get just little crazy um, bumps in your surface. And the whole trick is to keep it nice and smooth and even. So now I'm gonna use my tack cloth and I'm gonna wipe this off away from my surfaces where I'm painting. So it's nice and smooth. We've got a nice clean surface to work with. Then I'm going to add a second coat. So now it's all nice and smooth and um, it's free of any debris. And so we're going to add a second coat. And then this time, I think the problem on this edge is it would, I was not pulling it to my advantage. So I'm going to turn it upside down just so I know that I can go in and just clean up that edge. You see how that little indent gets fixed so easily just because I allowed it to dry. And I just put some water in my brush so the paint is going to move a little bit faster for me. I never put water in my paint because that thins it. I will put just a little bit of water into my brush and blot my brush. It's always important to blot your brush, otherwise you have so much water you can't control your paint. And then I'm just quickly putting in the second coat. Now I think I got a little bit of debris in there, so I'm going to pick it up with my fingernail and then just go over it really quickly. When you're working with wet paint, dust and dirt is your enemy. And see, I just picked up something else, because I'm going into old paint now, so I think some of it was starting to dry. So I'm gonna clean up this edge, make it look really pretty. Make sure that there's no ridges anywhere in the paint. And that's looking nice and smooth and even now. So I think I'm gonna dry that, and then later on, in another video, I'm going to actually show you how to paint this. So that's Base Coating 101. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot about how to base coat not only your background, but, uh, but also individual icons with acrylic paints. Also, if you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Thanks.